Hi everyone, I'm Gertie and welcome back to my online L'Amour Dress class. If you haven't seen the previous segments of this class, please do go ahead and catch up on those. And to catch you up on what we're doing here, this is the L'Amour Dress class that was previously on my Charm School site. It was a paid course. In light of current world events, I am releasing it to you free of charge. I want you to enjoy it. I want you to stay home and sew. So please enjoy the class. Also know that a lot has changed about the pattern since I released this class. We've now released it in sizes two through 20 with A through H cup sizes, as well as adding new design elements. So check it out, buy the pattern on the Charm site, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to me on Patreon, stay healthy, Stay safe and stay home and sew, and I'll see you soon. We are back, we are ready to sew. First, I'm gonna talk about how to finish your seams. So the option I give you in, in the instructions is serging, just because I love using my serger for this purpose. It's fast, it's easy. And so the first thing you're gonna do, assuming you have a serger, and I'll talk a little bit in a minute about other options, but with the serger, you're gonna to wanna to finish your seams first, not as you go. So um, consult your instructions, but you are gonna to wanna to finish the all of the vertical sides of your skirt pieces, so pieces eight and nine, and then all around every side of the pocket. So you have four separate pockets. That's piece number 10. You're gonna serge all around those edges. And then you'll be um, all ready to sew and you won't have to worry about seam finishing going forward. And remember, you're gonna do that on the skirt lining pieces as well. Now, very important that when you're serging, you don't wanna be cutting off any fabric, okay? Because then that's gonna mess with your seam allowance, which is gonna mess with your sizing. So make sure that you're just running the fabric along the blade of the serger, but it's not actually cutting any fabric. So other options for seam finishing, you could pink your shears, I'm sorry, pink your seams with pinking shears when you are finishing your seams. So this is just for your skirt seams, okay? The bodice is fully enclosed. You just have to worry about the skirt seams. So pinking shears, uh, you could do a Hong Kong finish, with the, which is a bound finish. There are a lot of different seam finishes out there. I don't wanna get into them all. They're in my books, they're on the internet. So um, there are other things you can do without a serger, just know that. So the instructions do go over how to do that surging though. Okay, you've surged. The next step is that you're going to do stay stitching. We're on step number one of the instructions now, finally. So stay stitching is um, a, a stitch that really stabilizes the neckline, anything that has a curve to it. So we're going to be focusing on the center front bodice piece. This is piece number one. So we're going to be stitching from this side to the center front. Okay, so very important to do directional stitching around curves um, because this will prevent it from stretching out. If you go that way, you're gonna stretch it towards the bias princess seam. So you really wanna be careful about that. So I'm gonna start at the princess seam, sew towards center front. I'm using a half inch seam allowance and I am using a regular stitch length. So two and a half, three around there. Okay, so I'm gonna start, I'm using, like I said, half an inch is my seam allowance. I'm gonna backstitch. I always backstitch when I'm serging. Go to center front and then backstitch again. So I always backstitch when I'm stay stitching. I think I just said serging. So very important when you're stay stitching, just to keep it really stable, you're gonna backstitch on each side. Okay, so you're gonna do that on your dress front, on both sides, and then on the lining as well. The next step is underlining your bodice pieces. So I have my outer bodice piece and my muslin underlining. So I'm gonna put these two together. And a lot of times, You'll often read that it's essential to hand baste your outer fabric to your underlining. With cottons, I've never found that to be necessary, necessarily, because a lot of times cottons and muslin together are very, very coarse. And I'm trying to rub these two between my hands right now and they won't budge. So that's kind of my test for figuring out how 
whether or not I need to un underline by hand or if I can do it by machine. So because I have two cottons that are already sticking to each other, I'm gonna do my underlining basting by machine. If you're using something a little slippery and you find that the fabrics are moving, you're gonna to wanna to do this basting by hand. It's not that many pieces and they're fairly small, so it shouldn't take you too long, but um, it is nice to be able to speed through it on the machine. So here's what I'm gonna do. I put the muslin layer on top. I find it's best when you're um, sewing two fabrics together, especially if there's any chance they might slip and that would be a bad thing, like if you're basting two layers together. It's best to have the uh, more difficult fabric on the bottom because then the feed dogs kind of do the work for you. The muslin is obviously a very easy fabric to sew, so I'm gonna keep that one on the top. Okay. Now when I'm, just, when I'm uh, underlining, when I'm basting these two together, I'm just making sure that my edges are all matching. The, those two pieces are right on top of each other. And then I pin them together. And a little trick that I learned from someone who worked in a costume shop was that when you are pinning pieces together to baste, it's good to have the point of the pin facing outwards. It kind of creates a little more tension on the piece, almost like, um, a trampoline or something so that it's tight like a drum I guess you could say so um, so that you're not getting any wrinkles or ripples around your piece so just a few pieces I'm sorry just a few pins here throughout and then we're going to base these by machine Okay, so basting should be at your longest stitch length. Um, four is good. Uh, my machine goes up to five, but let's say four because that's the longest that some machines go. And also five is a little bit better for gathering stitches. So I'm gonna stick to four. I'm gonna start on one side and your stitching should be, for basting, should be with a half inch seam allowance, not your full five eighths of an inch. So I'm placing this at half an inch. I'm gonna start at the edge and just start stitching. And one trick that I like to use when I'm underlining and um, basting two pieces together is to just to kind of hold everything nice and taut. So I'm holding the fabric from this side, I'm holding my front hand like this and kind of angling it so it's creating some tension there. Take your pins out as you go. And then you're gonna pivot when you get around half an inch down here. So I'm just gonna pivot and just turn each corner like that. Same thing over here. So I'm just sewing kind of around a rectangle. So just one more side here. And so I just kind of crossed corners with my first line of stitching. Now I can pull this out. And now here you can see my underlined piece. And so you can't actually feel this, but I can tell, and maybe you can see on camera that this has so much more body to it now. And that's really gonna support the structure of this fitted dress. So you're gonna continue that with all of your outer bodice pieces, except for the halter strap. So you have your center front piece, you have that funny little upper side bodice piece. You have the lower side bodice pieces, and then you have piece five, for the back and piece six for the back. Okay, so those are all the pieces that you're underlining. You're doing that either by hand or by machine, depending on your fabric. And then next up, we're gonna start actually putting these pieces together. Okay, we are on step three now. This is forming that center front pleat on the bust line. So you're gonna grab your two front pieces of the bodice and then I'm going to form the pleat. Now I marked my pleat by um, making notches into those pleat lines, okay? So what you're gonna do is working from the front of the bodice is you're going to fold along that lower pleat line and bring it up 
so that it meets the upper pleat line, okay? So very important that you're working from the outside of the bodice, otherwise this is gonna be reversed and your pleat's gonna be going the other way. Okay, and then just pin that in place. Now, the most important thing here is that you wanna make sure that this is staying nice and it's a nice horizontal straight line right here. You don't want this to be pinned at all on an angle, otherwise your pleat will look a little askew, which you don't want. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. So again, just fold along the lower pleat line, bring it up to the upper pleat line. Again, make sure I have a nice straight line here and I'm gonna pin that in place. Now I'm gonna to go to the machine and the next thing I'm gonna do is baste these lines in place. So I'm still on my longer stitch length from when I underlined my bodice and I'm just gonna put this right underneath just the pleat section here at half an inch and I'm gonna baste that pleat in place taking out my pin as I go. Repeat that on the other side. Okay, we have two pleats basted in place. And the next thing to do is to sew the center front seam. So we have two center fronts here. We're gonna put these together, right sides together, like this. I'm gonna pin along that center front line. And the most important thing here is that you want to make sure that your pleats are matching. You don't want them to be even slightly off. Otherwise, it's gonna look a little funny on the right side of the dress. So I usually pin mine and then just double check from the right side that my pleats are matching. So I'm gonna put the two center fronts together and it's very important that you want to match those pleats. So make sure that when you're putting right sides together, you are in fact getting those pleats right on top of each other and you can always pin and then kind of double check from the outside that the pleat lines are aligned and it looks like they are. So we're good to pin the rest of the seam here. So top to bottom, you're just matching that seam. And now we're gonna sew this from top to bottom. Now we're gonna stitch to a regular, I'm sorry, we're gonna switch to a regular stitch length. So around two and a half, uh, three is where you wanna be on your stitch length. Start stitching from the very top. Don't forget to back stitch. Of course, take out your pins as you go. And backstitch again at the end. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is check that those pleats are aligned Looks like they're perfect. I can't tell you how many times I've had to rip out this seam just because it was slightly off and I knew it would bother me forever. So next thing we're gonna do is press this seam open. So I like to use a ham for seams like this just because I can raise it off the ironing board that feels a little better. Okay, of course my iron switched to auto off so let's just give it a minute here. But we're going to just press this open kind of by hand and then let's see if it's gonna be effective at all here. Oh, there comes the steam, and now it's dripping. So I wouldn't recommend pressing too flat on this pleat. You don't want to actually press out here like I did a little bit. So I, you want to kind of retain a nice soft fold on that pleat. So be careful there, but yeah, just press that seam open. Here's what it looks like on the outside, already looking like a beautiful dress. Okay, so that's all for that piece for now. 
the next thing we're going to do is sew the halter straps. Okay, so, and the reason for that is it might seem a little out of order, but the halter straps at this point need to be inserted into that diagonal seam on the dress. So we have to create the halter straps before we can create that side panel piece and sew the princess seam. So I have already sewn one of these halter straps. You can see here that this one is completed. I have a set of halter tie pieces right sides together. I'm going to pin them together all the way around the outer edges. And you don't need to use a ton of pins for a piece like this, especially when you're just sewing with cotton because it doesn't really slip around that much. I'm gonna sew around three sides of this halter tie, okay? This end is going to stay open, the sort of curved short end over here. I'm gonna sew down one long side, pivot at the short end, and then stitch around the other long side. So three sides. Let's start over here. I just backstitched, now I'm going to keep stitching five eighths of an inch. This is that one long side over here. Okay, I'm getting close to that short end. And I'm going to pivot. So anytime I know I'm gonna pivot, I use my hand wheel, just to be careful. I'm gonna lower the needle and then pivot. Again, using that hand wheel to pivot. And then I'm gonna finish off on the other long side. Okay, I'm going to finish off by back stitching and just clipping those threads. I've sewed around all three edges of the halter strap and I have one open edge here. Okay, now we're going to trim some corners here. So let's kind of get onto a flat surface. And you want to trim away from the short end corners as much as possible like that. And then for a couple inches on either side of this short tie, I trim to about a quarter inch here because we have those wide seam allowances that are gonna to be too wide for that narrow end of the tie. So kind of a few inches up to here until the tie starts to get wider, you need to really trim away there. So same thing on the other side. and this will keep the tie looking nice and neat on that short end. Okay, we have trimmed away. Now the next thing you're gonna do is to turn this right side out. And there are tools that can help you do this, like the fast turn tool or a loop turner, a knitting needle. I don't know why, but I always like to challenge myself to do it without tools, and I found that it is possible. So what I do here is just kind of put your hand down into it and go as far as you can. And now this end, you can kind of reach in with your finger, and pull through. It takes a little while, but it can definitely be done without a tool. I do have a set of fast turn tools that are great for this, but they're kind of pricey if you, if you don't do a lot of this kind of work. and it's very easy to just eventually work the end of this tie up through here, because it's not that narrow.
And then once you get kind of as far down as you can go, you can kind of use a pin as well to, to dig out the short end of that halter tie. Okay, see, that wasn't so tough. So I'm just gonna use a pin to just pull out the corners so that they look nice and neat. So you can see here, I have a nice turned out corner there. And now I'm gonna press the whole thing flat. It's looking not so attractive right now. So what I'm gonna do is to just lay this flat and kind of roll those corners out so that the seams aren't collapsing in on themselves. Turn my iron back on. And I'm gonna press this whole thing very flat. And again, I'm just rolling out those seams on the edges so that you don't get this sort of thing where it's pressed in on itself. So again, you can just kind of use your, use your hand here to keep rolling those seams out. Press the end nice and flat. I'm gonna work from this side now. Okay, there we go, nice flat halter tie. So I've got two of these now. The next thing I wanna do is sew a line of gathering stitches along this open end of the halter tie. So I'm gonna set my machine to that long stitch length. For gathering stitch, you wanna go as long as your machine will allow you to. So mine is five, yours might be four. Um, actually, some machines go really long these days, so I would say let's, let's say five is kind of where you want to be. All right, so I'm going to put this at half an inch for my first row of gathering stitches. And I'm stitching just from one end to the other on this halter tie on the open end of the tie. That's my first row of gathering stitches. Now I'm gonna do one that's a quarter inch away from that one. So I used half an inch seam allowance on my last one. Now I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, trim these threads. And now we're just going to pull those gathering stitches up so you find the bobbin threads and then just pull. And so now we'll just kind of gather them a little bit like that, but we'll be fitting them into a seam in the next few steps so it'll become clear how much they need to be gathered. You're gonna grab your lower side front pieces, which look like this, and your halter ties, and we're gonna pin them together and then baste them. So these all have notches to help you match them so that you know which side should be facing up. So find your notch, it's gonna be in that gathered portion here, but you can find it there. And yes, this is the side that matches that notch, like that, so I'm gonna start by matching the notch. And on this pattern piece, on piece three, there are little circle marks to help you place this halter tie because these need to be between the seam allowances. This doesn't want to get caught into the seam allowance here. So make sure that you have that circle mark and then make sure that the halter tie doesn't extend beyond the circle mark here. So I'm just gonna double check that I'm good with that. I can move it a little bit over. And then same thing on this side. Okay, there's a lot of basting threads going on now. So I'm making sure that that does not extend too far over there. 
And then I'm just going to evenly distribute these gathers. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. I'm just going to do a few more pins here. And then I'm going to baste at half an inch along here so that we're going to attach these two together. Okay, so I'm still on my long stitch on the machine. And at half an inch, I'm going to baste here. away any loose threads here. And now we have one halter tie attached to one lower side front bus. So you can kind of see now how this dress is going to come together. It's pretty exciting. Okay, we're going to repeat that same thing on the other side. Here is the opposite side of the lower side front bodice. And then you're going to match your notches. But if you ever get confused here, and believe me, I got confused when I was working on this pattern, the curved side always goes towards your neck, and the straighter side of the halter tie goes towards your shoulder. But the notches and the illustrations are all there to help you with this. OK, so you're going to match your notches here. I'm going to kind of spread this out now. It's not as gathered as you might think. It's a very subtle gather. So here I'm going to just check the circle on the wrong side and make sure that my strap isn't extending beyond that circle. And then same thing on the inside here. I'm going to place it here, check my circle mark, and then just evenly distribute those gathers. Okay, there we go. That is ready to be basted on now. Okay, I'm at half an inch again using a long stitch length. And now you can really trim away any of these extra gathering stitches. I don't know about you, but these are the stitches that I always find on my dress when I'm wearing it for the first time. So get as many as you can now. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is attach that upper side front bodice piece. So we're kind of creating like a little sandwich here with the halter tie. So these are these tiny little pieces, kind of funny looking. This is going to go kind of like this, all right? So this, these are going to be, these are going to fit together like this. I'm going to turn this the correct way. And then you're, you have your circle marks to match on either side here. And also, don't forget, you have a notch to match. It's always a little odd when you have a piece that doesn't exactly match here. The reason for that is that it does match along the 5 8 of an inch seam line. So you can see where it actually meets here at 5 8 of an inch, that does match. So it's when seam allowances are added that sometimes things start to look a little bit funny. But I promise you, these pieces go together correctly. So we're going to pin along here. And we're going to sew at 5 8 of an inch from here, from one side, all the way to the other. So very important that you're going back to your regular stitch length here, OK? Because we're sewing a seam now. We're not basting. So two and a half or three is where you want to be. 
start at the very edge and then backstitch. And we're sewing through a lot of layers here. And sew all the way to the other side of that piece. And then backstitch. Trim here. Okay, so you can see that when I lift that up, now we have what looks like a completed side princess panel. Very exciting. Okay, so we are going to press all of these seams down. Because the halter strap generally goes up. So it's best for these seams to be pressed down. Because that's how gravity kind of wants them to go. Now we're going to grade these seam allowances. So grading just means that you are cutting the seam allowances different widths so that they don't form a really bulky ridge from the right side of the garment. Okay, so you're going to start with this layer right here. This is going to be your shortest layer. So that's the upper side front bodice. I'm going to start by trimming this top seam allowance which is the upper side front bodice. I'm going to trim that down and that is going to be our shortest seam allowance. So trim that to about a quarter inch. Okay, we have two more seam allowances underneath here. The next one is the halter tie. You can see it's all ruffled and gathered underneath there. That one is going to be the next widest one. So just a little bit wider than the first one we did. Excuse my messy cutting. There we go. Okay, and then our third, whoops, our third seam allowance is this seam allowance, the lower side front bodice, and that one will be the widest. So cut it just a little bit wider than the gathered halter strap. Okay, so three sets of seam allowances there, and they're all three different lengths, okay? And that's what creates a grade or a nice sort of soft beveled edge underneath your garment rather than that really harsh stacked up um, edge there. Okay, so we've pressed that down, we've graded. The next step is going to be to sew the princess seams. So let me just grab my bodice front. And the instructions will tell you here that you should stay stitch from the top of the bodice down to the lower princess seam notch. And I would normally do that except that I use machine stitching for my underlining, for the basting. So I have a line of stitching at half an inch already. So I am not going to stay stitch this for sewing the princess seam. But if you did hand basting on your underlining, you are going to want to do that line of stay stitching. So refer, refer to those directions in step nine, stay stitch from the top down to the lower notch. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do for this princess seam is to create little clips about every half inch from the top of the bodice, from the neckline, down to the lower princess seam notch, okay? You have two sets of notches on this princess seam and there's the lower one. Oh, there it is. Okay, so that's about right. Okay, now these seams are going to be sewn together. You can kind of see how those are gonna curve together here. So place these right sides together. I always put the center front or the one with the clips on top because what's gonna happen here is those clips are going to spread to meet the curve of the princess seam below. Now note that in the larger cup sizes, you're going to have a more extreme spread here because this curve is more extreme. I'm sewing a C cup, it's not as extreme, and if you're sewing the B cup, you'll have even less of a curve here. So just keep that in mind. You may notice that you don't need to to curve these um, clips out that much at all. You might be surprised, or you might find if you're sewing the double D cup that you're actually doing a lot of spreading. 
So it's all dependent on the cup size that you're sewing. So the C doesn't have a ton of spreading, but it does need to, especially around the curviest part there, it does need to spread a bit to match. And this little trick for sewing princess seams works on all types of princess seams. So uh, it doesn't have to be a strapless bodice. It could be a regular sleeved bodice, sleeveless bodice with princess seams. This is a great trick to know that stay stitching, clipping, and then spreading along the curve. Okay, let's go over to the sewing machine now and we're going to start stitching from the top at 5 eighths of an inch. Make sure you're on your regular stitch length, and I am. I'm gonna back stitch here. And then just make sure that everything stays nice and flat, but that those curves are matching each other. If you're getting any bunching under your foot like that, just stop with the needle all the way down, lift your presser foot, smooth everything out. Princess seams, you know, you have two extreme curves going together, so they're not always the easiest thing to sew, and you may find you're getting a little bit of bunching, but just stop. Again, smooth everything out. Okay, and I backstitched at the bottom. All right, so let's take a look at what I just sewed. You can see that princess seam that I sewed, and it's gonna press open like this. Now, the most important thing before you press the seam open is you can see that we have the clips on one side, that's the center front that we clipped. We want to create notches on the side front here. And the reason for that is you can see when I start to press it open, I'm getting some ruffling along that curve there. So it's because of the way the curves um, work with each other. Now we have too much fabric over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna clip, or we're gonna notch, excuse me, we're gonna notch into those seam allowances. And first I'm gonna just take a look on the outside of my bodice. Oh, it's looking nice. Okay, you can see how that is just intersecting perfectly. That's something you kind of want to check as you're sewing this dress, that um, the halter ties are meeting right at the intersecting seams where they're supposed to be. Okay, now that I congratulated myself for that. Let's go to the other side, and this is where we're going to be creating those notches. Okay, I'm trying to think the best way to show you this. How about if I open it like this, and then I'm going to be creating notches, so this, it's different from a clip, right? A clip is what we did on the other side. That's just a straight snip in. A notch is an actual triangle cut out, like that, okay? And I try to cut my notches so that they are in between sets of clips on the other side so that you don't have two cuts meeting each other at a seam. And obviously you wanna be very careful not to cut all the way up to that seam, but just as close as you can without cutting it. And I'll never forget getting yelled at in a course I took at FIT for making the most enormous notches that the instructor had ever seen. And I still tend to kind of do it, um, but I, I try to be a little better. Apparently you should keep them pretty skinny. Okay. So it's starting to look a little bit weird. All right, and I'll just go down a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna set this on the ham, and I'm gonna press that seam open. Get my iron going again. 
Now I will say one thing that I have noticed after sewing this dress several times now is that this intersection is a little bit tricky and this seam allowance kind of wants to just stay pressed this way where this intersection of seams is. So I kind of let it just do that about right there, and then the rest of it you can press open. Otherwise, if you try to press it open, and I have tried to press this open, and then I've also done things where I've hand-stitched it down over here, it creates a little bit of a bump. So I personally think it's better to just press that, those little notches there, towards the center, and the rest of the seam you can press completely open. All right, so let's start on the bottom. I'm on the ham. Pressing this open until I get about right here, and then that's going to be pressed towards center front. And now I'm going to kind of reorient the top here. I had someone bring a ham holder to a class recently, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever, but I tend to kind of just hold the ham with one hand, position, and then hold the iron in the other hand, so it's a lot to juggle. But there are things called ham holders, if that interests you. Okay, so my princess seam is pressed open. So hopefully that should give you a good view here. Pressed open from there until that intersecting seam, that's all pressed towards the center front and then pressed open from the intersecting seam down. Okay, so what we have on the front should be a nice looking Pressed princess seam, looking beautiful. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is, I haven't sewn the other half of the bodice, but I'm gonna go ahead and sew the two back panels together on this side. Okay, these are your two back panels. This is the center back and this is the side back. We are gonna sew these together. You can see you have your triple notches right there and that's the back princess seam. A back princess seam is much easier to sew than a front princess seam because there are no boobs to deal with, so it's very flat. So we're just gonna put these together like this, match those notches and pin along this seam. And you can see I've actually marked in the number of these pieces because I do get confused and it's easy to just pencil things in on muslin. So if you think you might actually confuse those pieces because they look very similar, not a bad idea to actually mark those in. Okay, let's go over to the sewing machine. Okay, I'm gonna sew, I'm sewing from the bottom to the top here at five eighths of an inch. Okay, I'm gonna press this seam open. I'm gonna complete that for the other back panel, but for now, I'm just gonna sew this to the front bodice so you can see how the side seam goes together. So side seam to side seam. I'm gonna put these together, right sides together. Match those double notches there at the bottom. And we're gonna sew these two pieces together now. So this is our side seam. Again at 5 eighths of an inch. Gonna back stitch at the top. And again, back stitch at the bottom. We'll press this seam open just like we did the back princess seam, very flat and easy with these straight seams. Okay, so I have one half of this bodice completed. I'm gonna go ahead and finish that other front princess seam, the back princess seam, and then the side seam on this, and also complete all the pressing. the 
outer bodice. So the front princess seams, side seams, and the back princess seams. So you can see I have a fully completed outer bodice here. Very exciting. So we're well on our way to having a dress. And you can see now, what I love about this is that you can really see at this point how that inner structure of the underlining is really supporting the outer bodice. And that's going to really pay off later on when we have the lining, which is um, fully steel boned. So this is gonna stand up really well to that steel boning and you're gonna have a really beautifully structured dress. So the next step, we're gonna go on to constructing our bodice lining.